Yeah, so wondering if you could kind of just take us through like the moment when you got the call and found out that, um, you know, this career long goal of yours had finally been achieved of making the all-star game for the first time. Man, um, it was, it was unreal. You know, I was, I was back at home in Columbus, uh, Ohio, and we were at the dinner table with the family and, uh, and I started to get a bunch of calls on my phone from numbers I didn't know. Um, so I just kept kind of canceling it, and, you know, and then call early and all that. And, uh, and then my dad calls me uh, and I look at it and cancel it too. So I'm like, I'm just going to finish eating and then I'll call these people back or whatever. I don't know what he wants. Then I get a text from, uh, from Utah Jazz and the management. And they're like, hey, you might want to call back. Uh, uh, the league's trying to reach you. And I was like, the league? So I'm thinking like, what? What what could they want? And we, I know we have a players associated meeting, you know, all this stuff. I don't know what it's for. So I hop up real quick, say, I'll be right back and go to the back of the bathroom and start, you know, call the number back. And he's like, uh, hey, Mike, got some good news. You know, there's a there's a spot available uh, in the three point contest and the all star game. And I'm, all I heard was three point contest. And I was like, oh, yeah, for sure. You know, I'd love to do that. And I was like, and all star spot. I was like, he's like, yeah, man. Uh, if you're if you're available, I was like, shit. I I'm doing nothing. I am sitting sitting here with my family. I'm I'm on the first thing smoking. So um, immediately, you know, went back to the family and told them the news, and uh, everybody was really excited. So it was uh, it it was, you know, a unique way to find out, and I'm just blessed and thankful for the opportunity. Next up, Chris Saltos. Hello, Mike. Hope you are doing well. What it means this uh, all-star appearance for you, and what was the biggest sacrifice that you made uh, through your uh, your years in in the NBA to be an all-star? Well, you know, uh, it's obviously an honor. There's so many people deserving to be uh, be an all-star uh, every year. You know, there's you go 20, 22 guys deep uh, for each side if you wanted to. Um, You know, for me, it was, you know, I always tried to play through as much injury, as much pain as I could to try to, you know, not miss games, to be there for the team, to, you know, to sacrifice my body, to try to, you know, have opportunity to do it. And uh, never could quite, you know, make the cut. And uh, there have, you know, been years that I've scored a lot of points and uh, my team's been, you know, middle of the pack or not so good. And, Uh, haven't had a chance to make it and there's been I've been on teams where we've been really good and um, and I've just had to had a dip had a different role and that's what I've kind of had here in Utah is um, you know just a, a different role in which uh, I've been able to play really well and um, alongside a, a lot of great guys and great coaches so you know the opportunity isn't something that I did for myself it's something that we did collectively as a team and Um, an organization. So I'm just thankful for all those guys. Sorry, Todd, does right news. Mike, we're coming up on the one year anniversary of everything that happened in OKC and the league shutting down. And uh, there's been a, a lot that's happened in this year with everything that went on in the bubble and coming back and starting the season. And I'm just wondering sort of what are the things that stick out the most to you? Maybe what lessons have you learned about yourself through the year? Well, I mean, it seems like yesterday, you know, um, us being in Oklahoma City and um, going through what we had to go through as a team, as a league, as a nation. Um, and now that we are, you know, a year, a year removed almost and um, saw what, you know, the ups and downs of what the, the pandemic has brought um, for so many people and, um, you know, for myself, it's just, just speaks to the resiliency of, of us as people, as, as humans, as players, um, as citizens. I think everybody has had to kind of be stripped down to the ground level and 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 kind of self-reflect during this time. So uh, it's been a trying time, but, you know, one in which we've learned a lot about ourselves. Nicole, Tab Deportes. Hi, Mike. Congrats for, for being our star. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. What means for you be here 
and having two teammates and Queen Snyder <clears throat> in the event of representation of the jazz. Um, it's awesome to share this opportunity and this this moment with with my teammates, with the coaches, um, with all the guys from the organization. You know, it's just great to be here and see so many familiar faces, and um, you know, just to 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 continue what we've been doing, just our camaraderie and chemistry, to be able to to play an All Star game with with Rudy and, and Don, and actually get to play against Coach Quinn uh, coming up. Um, it's going to be, you know, one of the better moments of my life, and I'm just looking forward to, to going out there. Andrew Lopez, ESPN. Hey, Mike, uh, Andrew from ESPN here. I uh, just wanted to ask you, uh, I'm doing a story on alley-oops. Um, I've talked to Rudy about this, and Rudy said it, it took you a little bit of time to kind of get the timing down uh, with him. Um, what, what, do you, what goes into – I, I guess a good alley to you, and how do you work on that timing of when, when you're especially getting with new players who like to to you know have lobs thrown to them? Yeah, well, for me, it was it was getting used to just the idea of throwing a lob to to any any big because you know I had God bless Marcus all, but he's not jumping above the rim for many many lobs. Um, as we got older, it was a lot of bounce passes and a lot of pocket passes. So for me, it was just you know understanding. You know when and where is it is the time for me to look to make that pass or look to score because uh, I've been so used to uh, being at certain angles and being in certain parts of the paint that required me to make the decision of shooting or passing out to the wing or like a bounce pass. So now my my reads just changed from from you know the floater to an alley oop uh, for Rudy and uh, and learning where you know his catch radius, like he catches it all over the place. You can throw a bad pass, uh, you know, way over the backboard, over the rim, and he can go get it. So understanding that if you just throw it to a spot, um, he'll be there to, to, to save you. So just gotten used to that and, um, and you know, being patient with the ball and being able to get him, get him opportunities. Rudy had mentioned Mark, but I, I didn't want to, you know, have Marcus all catch any strays here, so I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, no worries. Now, Mark's my guy. He knows, he knows I've been throwing no lob, so. Next up, Chris Cross, 48minutes.com. Hey, Mike. Um, with going through the all, the uh, three-point contest ahead of the All-Star game, do you have any, any expectation on how much you're actually playing the game? Has, has anyone kind of talked to you guys or the other guys that are playing um, maybe a lighter load than normal? Um, I haven't really uh... – really discussed that at all about um, how much we'll play or not play. Um, like I said, I'm obviously excited to be here, excited to compete in three point contests. And uh, maybe I'll get most of my shots up then, but um, you know, we'll just see, you know, I know that, you know, there's a lot of guys and um, you know, there's going to be a lot of opportunity for people. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Clement Damascos. Hey, you're still on route. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Uh, thank you. Mike, congratulations. So uh, long overdue, your first all-star appearance. All your career, you're uh, part of really grit and grind teams like Memphis, like Utah now. And uh, what is most important about you uh, for what's Utah achieving this season? Like holding the first place and uh, going forward, what to help you, what, what do you have to do better in the second half of the season? so you can uh, maintain the first place? Yeah, um, you know, I've always been a guy, I've always been concerned about winning first and, and how well we do as a team has always been my first uh, goal. And, um, and this year, you know, with the way we've started and the way we've played, um, we're getting a lot of recognition for it. We're, you know, guys are getting rewarded for it. Um, and those things come with, with winning and, and I'm just happy to be a part of an organization and a team that's um, been able to start the way we have. And uh, we understand that, you know, we don't want to be the regular season champs as far as uh, regular season games are concerned. We, we have the bigger goal of winning a championship. So, um, but along the way, continue to play and compete and to get better as we go. Uh, because the second half of the year is, is going to be a sprint and uh, and we got to be ready to go on and, and hitting on all cylinders if we're going to have a chance uh, at competing for the ultimate goal. 
James Hill, BNC Sports. <clears throat> Conley, congratulations on all your success. Last time that we talked, you were basically a big time guy over in Memphis. Uh, you've been in Salt Lake for a while now and you're playing really well. Congratulations on your all-star. Can you talk a little bit about what this means to you personally to play in the cause that it's giving back to HBCUs? Oh, most definitely. This is, um, like I said, the honor it, just to be here as, as an all-star is great, but um, for what we're playing for and what we're being a part of and representing um, alongside with HBCUs and um, just, you know, it's a special moment for me. It's a special moment for all of us athletes and um, <clears throat> to be able to be, you know, to say I was in that all-star game, you know, that, that was represented in such a way like this one will be. And um, it, it's exciting. You know, I've got a lot of people calling and, and excited about that and, um, I can't wait to, you know, go home and show them the hoodies I got, you know, with HBCU schools on them and uh, artists who designed them and um, just really cool, really cool experience. And I'm just excited to represent the league and, and uh, the Utah Jazz in it. The Jazz have a really good team this year. Uh, you guys are making a lot of noise in the West. Um, what's your thought process as you go back to Salt Lake and you guys uh, shift gears for the second half? Well, we're just we're just locked in and, and focused on on getting better, you know, one percent better every day. And um, and coach has done a great job of, of keeping us grounded, keeping us locked in on mistakes and things that we can improve on. And even, you know, during winning streaks, you know, we're we're, you know, locked in in film rooms and and, and dissecting uh, individual performance and team performance to try to make us better. So. Um, second half is, is try to do more of the same. You know, we understand that it's going to be a sprint to the finish um, and, and that, you know, we're not a team that's under the radar at all. I think everybody knows who we are. Uh, teams, you know, get up and, and ready and, pre and prepared to play us. And uh, we're going to have to take that challenge every night and, and, and try to you know, ride that, that momentum into the playoffs. Thanks, Mike, and stay safe. All right, thank you. Kim Buford, LA News Observer. Hey, Mike, uh, congratulations on the opportunity to play in the uh, All-Star game. I want to ask you not only about what the league is doing for the HBCUs, but how you feel being a part of a, the league that really has a major impact on society, from voting to giving back to, to philanthropy, from players like yourself giving back to the community. Talk about that shared, that shared experience and elaborate on that, if you would. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um... I think, you know, for us as athletes to be, to use our platforms, to use um, our status as role models uh, for, for our kids and our communities, um, for society in general, I think we've learned over the years that people really respond um, to what we're doing and what we say and things we raise awareness towards. And um, I think it was never more evident than what we were able to do in, in the bubble and um, last summer, you know, guys in their individual cities, um, I mean, just the stuff that everybody's, you know, going out and doing is, is unbelievable. I'm just happy to know that I was, you know, in the league and a part of it, you know, when guys really try to take advantage of, of, of their ability to reach people and their ability to make change and create change. So, um, you know, it's, it's awesome. And, and even, you know, shout out to Adam Silver and what he's been able to do as, as commissioner and um, you know, he's just really been a leader for our league and, um, and Michelle Roberts and, and the MBPA and, and all the guys who work closely with her. It's been it's been a, a really cool experience to be a part of. Thank you.